Our journey begins in the historic heart of Western civilization, the age-old city of Rome, home to the first documented prison known as the Mamertine. This subterranean prison, far more reminiscent of a somber grotto than a standard jail, was a place of dread and fear, reserved exclusively for the cruelest of criminals. The Mamertine was not a simple prison, it was an architectural marvel, carved out of the bedrock of Rome's Capitoline Hill. It consisted of two desolate chambers, stacked vertically. The upper chamber, referred to as the Tullianum, functioned as a temporary holding cell. Below it was the lower chamber, the dungeon, or the lower Tullianum as it was known, where the prisoners were truly confined. Entry to this lower cell was only possible through a single hole in the ceiling. Prisoners were lowered down into this grim dwelling through this hole. Once inside they would, they would find themselves enveloped in a chilling and moist atmosphere. Dank stone walls closed in on them, with scarce light streaming through the tiny high-set openings. The cold and wet conditions penetrated to the bone, the almost palpable darkness overwhelmed the senses, and the poignant stench of despair was an ever-present companion. The Mamertine prison was neither created for comfort nor rehabilitation. Its entire design was aimed at breaking the human spirit. Its dark and damp cells were silent spectators to countless tales of desperation and despair. The inmates of this prison were mainly political prisoners, rebels who dared to challenge the mighty Roman Empire, or criminals considered too dangerous for ordinary jails. These were individuals feared not only by the public, but also by their own criminal fraternity. Within the chilling confines of the Mamertine, darker side was laid bare, as the prisoners endured the agonizing wait for their inevitable fate, often leading to execution. This prison has been host to several notable inmates in its time, one of the most famous being Vercingetorix, the gallant Gallic chieftain who dared to defy Julius Caesar. His spirit was ultimately broken within these walls, and he was strangled to death on Caesar's orders. The Mamertine thus stands, not just as a remnant of Rome's ancient history, but as a harsh testament to the darker corners of humanity and the terrifying consequences of defying the powers that... Let's hit the rewind and journey back to the 16th century, landing squarely within the imposing stone walls of the infamous Tower of London. This historic structure, initially envisaged as a grand royal palace, was erected by William the Conqueror in the 1070s, serving as a symbol of his power and a fortress to protect his possessions. However, the majestic aura of the tower soon began to fade, as it morphed from a royal residence into a harrowing house of incarceration. A shadowy veil of notoriety was cast over it, partly due to the horrifying tales of the torture methods employed within its cold, damp cells. The infamous rack, a device designed to dislocate every joint in the victim's body, was a common instrument of agony. The scavenger's daughter, an iron contraption that compressed the body causing immense pain, was another gruesome tool wielded in the tower's dark chambers. The tower's fame, or rather infamy, was not only due the spine-chilling torture methods used, but also because of its infamous tenants. Two of the most distinguished among these were Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, both ill-fated wives of King Henry VIII. They were both accused of adultery and treason. Anne Boleyn, the second wife of Henry VIII, was imprisoned in 1536. Her final days were filled with fear and uncertainty as she awaited her impending execution. Catherine Howard, the fifth wife of Henry VIII, met a similar fate in 1542. Their tragic endings, both by beheading on the Tower Green, have added to the chilling lore and dramatic history of the Tower of London. Our journey now takes us to the 18th century, to the rugged coasts of Australia, where stands the notorious Port Arthur Penal Settlement. It wasn't always the hellish prison it's known as today. In its infancy, it was a humble timber station, surrounded by towering trees and lush vegetation. However, its identity took a dark turn as it morphed into one of the most brutal prison colonies for the toughest British convicts. Its transformation from a bustling timber station to a horrific prison was not an overnight phenomenon. Initially, a place of hard labor and lumber production, its and the harshness of the surrounding environment made it an ideal location to house convicts 
deemed too hardened or dangerous for mainland prisons. Thus, the timber station began its grim evolution into a penal settlement. Isolated on the Tasman Peninsula, the prison was a living nightmare for the hapless souls unfortunate enough to be sent there. They faced abhorrent conditions, both physical and mental. The prisoners were subjected to grueling physical labor, malnutrition and psychological torture. Escape was nearly impossible due to the peninsula's isolation and the infamously treacherous waters surrounding it. The prison's history is riddled with tales of tragic events and notorious inmates. One notable story is that of William Billy Hunt, a prisoner who attempted a daring yet ultimately futile escape by disguising himself as a kangaroo. His plan was thwarted when hungry guards, mistaking him for a real kangaroo, decided to hunt him for food. Thus, the Port Arthur penal settlement, once a symbol of thriving industry, stands as a chilling testament to human cruelty and the lengths people will go to survive. As we journey back to the 19th century, our focus shifts to the USA, specifically the infamous Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary. Often referred to as The Rock, this intimidating fortress looming in the San Francisco Bay was home to some of America's most dangerous criminals. These included the notorious gangster Al Capone, who, despite his notoriety, was subdued under the iron-fisted prison regime. Al Capone, known for his ruthless crimes, was but one of the many infamous inmates. Robert Stroud, the Birdman of Alcatraz, spent 17 years in solitary confinement, gaining fame for his study of birds. Then there was George Machine Gun Kelly, known his flamboyant lifestyle and dramatic kidnappings, found himself locked away in Alcatraz for 17 years as well. The brutality of the prison regime was legendary. Inmates were subjected to severe disciplinary measures, solitary confinement, and a strict code of silence. The structure of the prison, which included heavy iron bars, guard towers, and a patrol of armed guards, all added to the oppressive climate. It created an environment so harsh that it was believed to be almost impossible to escape from. However, the infamous penitentiary did not just house criminals with no escape attempts. Alcatraz has a rich history of breakout attempts, most notably the daring escape of 1962. Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers, using homemade tools, dug a tunnel and fled on a raft made from raincoats. Their fate remains a mystery to this day. This incident only further cemented Alcatraz's place in prison legend and lore. The chilling isolation, brutal regime, and infamous escape attempts have all contributed to Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary's status as an icon of prison history. As our journey draws to a close in the latter part of the 20th century, we find ourselves on the harrowing grounds of Tadmor Prison in Syria. A chilling symbol of inhumanity, Tadmor Prison is notorious for its horrific human rights abuses. This was a hellish place where prisoners were subjected to unthinkable torture and lived in a perpetual state of dread. To fully grasp the atrocities committed, it's important we delve into specific instances that transpired within the prison's walls. For example, in June 1980, following an assassination attempt on then-President Hafez al-Assad, soldiers were given the gruesome order to execute every prisoner in sight. The massacre saw hundreds, if not thousands, of extinguished in a single horrifying day. The abuse was not just physical, but also psychological, with prisoners often kept in solitary confinement for extended periods. Consider the story of Aziz, a political dissenter who spent years in isolation, starved and beaten regularly. His only crime was voicing an opinion different from the ruling regime. The legacy of Tadmor prison is not merely one of brutality and terror, but also of a profound stain on Syria's history. The tales of cruelty that seeped the prison walls echoed far beyond the confines of Tadmor, chilling the international community and tarnishing Syria's global image. As we reflect upon our shared history, Tadmor remains a stark, haunting reminder of the darkest corners of our world and the profound horror humans are capable of inflicting on one another. As we draw the curtains on this spine-tingling journey through time, we trust that we have shed some light on the ominous history of dangerous prisons. These are not just places of punishment, but significant chasms in our historical timeline. They stand as stark reminders of the depths to which humanity can sink when law and order are pushed to their extremes. 
These grim tales of the past serve as a potent reminder of the importance of justice, humanity, and the power of redemption. Not only do they record our past, but they also serve as a beacon, illuminating the path ahead, teaching us invaluable lessons about our society's flaws and the need for persistent reform. Remember, every story from these haunting cells is a brushstroke in the vast canvas of our collective consciousness, and it's vital that we remember and reflect upon these stories. It is through understanding our past that we can better shape our future. Now, before we bid farewell fellow time travelers, we'd like to request you to hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up you found value in this journey. Your encouragement is the fuel that keeps us on our quest to unravel the intricate weave of our history. Until we embark on our next expedition, stay curious, stay enlightened, and never cease to journey through the annals of time.